Shepard go by. So now Morgan Shepard moves into fifth spot. Here is the replay, and let's see whether or not they got together. Morgan comes up alongside of him, but the car goes up the racetrack. And I don't think they did. They're all too close. Well, Sterling Marlin losing positions. Let's go to uh, Dick Bergeron and uh, find out what might be the problem, Dick. I mean, it's crew chief Steve Lloyd. Steve, what's going on? You're drifting back. Uh, he's complaining about the car's a little bit loose right now. We were running a lower groove earlier in the race. I think he needed the tires up. So the pin here in about 15, 16 left, but the fresh tires on it just fall a little bit. We should be all right. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that are complaining that they're loose. Earnhardt saying he's loose. Walter saying he's loose. All of them down pit road. They don't like to make a pit stop, tighten the cars up a little bit. And here is uh, Davey Allison and Mark Martin as they battle for second spot. Davey Allison has just taken that spot away from Mark Martin. Davey continues his march towards the front. You know, this is probably the longest green flag run that we have had here this afternoon. And that's one reason that they're complaining about the cars getting loose because they're they are uh, slipping and sliding a little bit more now than the tires are heated up. Now, about 10 laps ago, Jeff Bodine had a little over a seven second lead on the car number 94 that was running second at that time. Right now, Davey Allison has moved into second place. He is only six seconds behind. So Robert Yates says that he has uh, gained on it. That was quite a serial we saw there. He dropped back clear to 37th position just after the start of the race, and now he is back up to second. So Davey Allison is certainly having a good run here this afternoon, and he's trying to start a good season. He has finished no better than 13th in any event so far this year, and of course got uh, some relief help in the race at Rockingham because of a fading spell. Davey Allison running in second position at the moment. Now let's go back and take a look at the incident that occurred between Ernie Irvin and Jeff Bodine a while ago. Irvin off of corner number four, losing control. And he just spins the car, and luckily he's able to lock the brakes up and no one hits him. But guys, you know, this reminds me so much of my first few years at Darlington Raceway. What? Yeah. I mean, I came here in 1970 for my first visit. I finished fifth. I had spun out more times than that. <laughs> I hit everything that moved, and some things didn't move like a wall. You remember, that was a crash. That was the year that Richard Petty had the big crash come off turn four. Oh, yeah. I come up, I'm an ARCA driver. I'm on a customer since it's crashing. I come off the corner. I'm rubbernecking the wreck, right? Wow, what a wreck. I'm running the back of Henry Gray. You were watching Richard wreck, and yeah. you didn't yeah. you wrecked yourself. I can also remember you starting on the pole in the... Oh, uh, come on now. And I was so proud of you. You'd done some races for us, and I thought, boy, Benny's going to win this race. And you got to the second corner, and it was all over. By the <laughs> Didn't make it through the first corner on the first lap. Right. Well, Benny, since you admitted some of those yeah, things here, okay, you know, we've all had our times <laughs> here at Darlington. In 1964, I only spun out twice on the first lap. You spun out twice on the first yeah, in one in, lap? Yeah, going into the first turn. Got hit, though. I got hit by somebody else, so of course I didn't just lose it. Right. Got her squared away and took off down into turn three. Got hit by the same man. <laughs> Spun out again in turn three. Finished fourth in the race, though. Okay. <laughs> there is Jeff Bodine, who is having no problems at the moment, leading this race over Davey Allison and Mark Martin. Good crowd on hand here in Darlington and beautiful weather. We'll be right back in Winston Cup competition. And normally at this race, a lot of them need front and rear clips when they leave. But it's been fairly safe so far. Just a big crash down in turn one earlier. Yeah, pretty clean race. Jeff Bodine continues to lead this event. However, it is Davey Allison who is now in second and beginning to close in just a little, clicking off every lap just a little bit more. We're on lap number 160. At lap 184, just 24 laps from now, we will be at the halfway point. The driver who leads that time will win $10,000, and you can win a Pontiac Grand Prix. You can still register to win by dialing 1-900-246-0101. That's 1-900-246-0101. It will cost you 95 cents to win, and you must be 18 to participate. 
if you get called back after the halfway point and you know who was the leader at that point, you will win a Pontiac Grand Prix. If you don't know who was leading at that point, then you will receive an award of $500 in cash. And we're going to see some pit stops here before too long, guys. It won't be too long before we start making green flag pit stops. And boy, let me tell you, you talk about a driver coming in and out of the pits, that's going to make a big difference on track position. Look at how close Davy Allison is to the leader, Jeff Bodine. He has really moved in and now is within just a second or two. Yeah, he has really moved in on him, no question about it. Now David's sort of got to block in some traffic back there that will slow him down a little bit. Now he begins to get clear of that traffic. That gave Jeff Bodine a little bit of running room. Here is uh, Neil Body coming into the bits. Alan Quick, his uh, crew is out on pit road thinking he's coming in very shortly. So, so green flag pit stops are coming up. Neil not among those in the lead lap. He's being shown in 22nd position. fuel going in and rubber being changed on the right side. He'll only take a two-tire change and Neil Bonnet moves back out. However, we do get an indication from that that before long, everybody else is going to be coming in for some fresh tires and fuel. Rusty Wallace was in just a couple of laps ago. Rusty also running at least one lap down. He was involved in the crash. There is Bodine. Boy, let's that car drift up high on the racetrack, up against that wall and turns one and two. And there is how close Davey Allison is. And you mentioned, Ned, that that little uh, problem he ran into some traffic a lap ago slowed him down, but now he has made up that uh, advantage. This is yeah, he's picking up uh, a good half a second a lap. Alan Kowicki is in the pit area. Dick Bergman is there. Well, this is a scheduled pit stop. It's going to be a four-tire change. Up and down pit road, everybody's looking to see whether they're going to be four or two tire stops. They'll take four tires if they need to go a lot faster on the racetrack. They'll take two if they don't. Robert Yates just stuck two fingers in the ears of his guys. They may change their mind, but Wiki's guys for sure are going to take four. They're on the left side right now. Paul Andrews over the wall, getting ready to send him off. No, Wiki's left front is not yet on. Slow stop for Alan Kowicki, trouble with the left front. But he's back out there now, and he goes two laps down. He was one lap down in 21st position when he came in for the service. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. Is that Earnhardt coming into the pits? Yes, it is, man. So Dale Earnhardt, who was running in fifth position, now heads for his pit area. Kirk Shelfordy, Richard Childress crew go to work on that car right here in front of us. Sterling Marlin also coming in, as is Ken Schrader. Green flag pit stops being made. Right side rubber going on the Goodrich Chevrolet number three by Dale Earnhardt. As you can see, Schrader pitted behind, and now they go to the left side on Dale Earnhardt, and they are making a chassis adjustment on the Earnhardt car. Yes, and they made a chassis adjustment on Alan Kowicki's car. We'll see quite a bit of that with the radial tires. They used to do those adjustments with tire stagger. Here's Sterling Marlin in the pits getting a four-tire change. That's Kenny Schrader at the top of your screen as Earnhardt goes out, but uh, they can't make the chassis changes by tire stagger now with the radials. They have to do it with the screw jacks. Sterling Marlin roars back out into competition. Davey Allison, the second place runner, is making his pit stop. He's on pit road. And Morgan Shepard is going to follow him in. Let's see what happens during Davey Allison's pit stop. He brings the Haviland Ford to a stop, and Dick Bergman is there to call it. Boy, what a run he's had this afternoon. From the lap down all the way to second position. 1987, this kid busted the wall down on fire. 88, he was third last year. He was second. There's only one place to go. This pit stop is going to be a four-tire change. They do not touch the chassis. Obviously, Allison happy with the way the chassis is. One can is in. Second one is going in the car, working on the left side tires now. Everybody watching everybody else. There he goes. Nice clean pit stop for Robert Gates and the crew as Davey Allison goes back out. And here's Mark Martin down off the jacks and back in competition of the Jack Roush Folgers number six board. Michael Walter pulls out of the pits at number 30. The number yeah. again coming in for his scheduled service in the number 33 car. Brett Bodine is on pit road. Here comes and now the we're watching car. for Jeff Bodine. Indeed, here comes the leader, Jeff Bodine, for a pit stop. And here's Jerry Punch. Budweiser crew having four sticker tires here on the wall. But on, brings the car, turns hard left, jams on the brakes, and Tim Brewer goes to work on the right front of the car. Mike Hill changing the right rear. 